Well, I appreciate everybody coming today. Um, I always find this time of the year um, to be maybe the most exciting time of the year is when you start training camp and your players show up and um, there's freshness to it. Um, one of the, I think, positive things we have here is they end summer school and then they get about 10 days off uh, to come back uh, to start training camp. So there is a leave campus, come back um, and get ready to go um, part of that. And as I said time and time again, we've made many positive gains in our program since the last month of the season, particularly. Um, we're looking forward to continuing to build upon these gains. Um, last th season, I believe, was more about thinking and adapting for our team. And I'm looking for this year to be more about execution for our team. Moving from here's what you do to here's how you do it. And that ought to be one of the biggest gains we make um, as we move forward. The players, the coaching staff, and everyone that's involved with our football program is much more comfortable going into our second season. And I know we can't wait to get on the field and work, work with our guys starting tomorrow. We're starting training camp in a little bit different manner as for the first three days, we're going to have split practices. So we have our team separated into two teams. We have blue team and we have a gold team. And you know, by doing this, we're going to have smaller numbers, which should be give us maximum opportunities for repetition and maximum opportunities for teaching during the course of that practice. Um, so the blue team will practice, and the gold team will lift, and then the gold team will come out and, and stretch towards the tail end of the blues practice. We'll do special teams in the middle. Blue will be done. They'll go lift, and the gold team will, will have the same practice um, after that. It'll be 90 minutes long with a, with, a, with a special teams period in the middle. And uh, this should really help our young players, because we're counting on several of these guys to help us in the depth this fall, and it also should really help um, our veteran players. I mean, even though Anthony Holmes played last year for us as a freshman, he didn't go through spring practice because of because of his shoulder surgery. A young man like Michael Leo, who didn't go through spring practice because he had the knee surgery at the end of the season. Those kind of guys that'll help a good bit. And then you take a guy like an Austin Bailey, who played quite a bit last year. This will help him to be able to get maximum opportunities. So I think across our roster. Um, splitting our, our team into these two groups and doing it for the first three days, two days in shorts and one in half pads, um, should prove greatly beneficial. Have we have, pardon? Have you done this before? I have um, a long time ago <laughs> at the University of Alabama, we did like 1987, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, but we, um, <clears throat> I've talked to several people that have done it. I've researched those that have done it. Um, we have some teams in our league do it. I mean, I'll use Miami of Ohio as an example. They did it last year. So I, I've talked with Mike Haywood about it. He shared with me um, that, OK? You know, that happens in my team meeting. I take the phone, I use up all the minutes, and then I give it back. Well, 90 minutes will keep them fresh. But I, but I think the opportunity to get maximum reps and maximum teaching. That's the biggest thing I was looking for. Um, you know, we, we have some guys coming in. You know, I think we have a good group of freshmen and a couple of junior college guys that are coming in here, and this is our first chance to work with them. How do you get them really coached? How do you get them maximum opportunities? You start out there with 105 guys, the first practice, you're not getting as many reps. I mean, your practice is longer, but the, but the concentrated work. Um, so we're looking for really good concentrated work. There'll be a lot of good teaching going on, particularly the first couple days. And then, our, then we should really hit, hit full stride. Um, we also have a couple of roster notes that I think you want. Richard Halls left our program, no longer with us. Uh, DJ Williamson is a wide receiver, originally from Warren G. Harding High School, um, started his career at University of Michigan. He's transferred here. He's enrolled here. He'll be in training camp with us. Um, Justin Favors is a young man that sat out last season um, from Trotwood Madison High School in the Dayton area. He's a tight end. He'll be with us. And then Ian Fomar is an offensive tackle that originally signed in this past signing date with Youngstown State, uh, was released from them. He's coming here as a non-scholarship player um, with us here in the fall. Plus, we're going to have several quality non-scholarship guys report today um, with our program. We've made that a real high priority for us and um, with our, with our in, particularly in state, in the state of Ohio. And uh, we're looking forward to those guys today uh, reporting and, and uh, joining our team. So with that, I'll uh, take any questions you might have. Um, you know, really not. He had a conversation with his position coach and just felt like he, you know, wanted to go home, be closer to home, 
and it, you know, and that's kind of what he said to us. So, one of the bare numbers of on your team, isn't it? We're going to have a we're going to have 104 guys report today, and a potential 105th here later on. Um, we had a young man who was reporting and got injured, a non-scholarship player, so he came out of the group. That's why it's not at 105 yet, but it, I think potential will be at 105 in a, a day or so. You don't know how much that last year? 98, I believe. Uh, of the 105 reporting, I believe 79 are on scholarship. Coach, uh, coming out of spring ball and now coming into practice starting uh, tomorrow, what are the things you feel good about? What are some of the things you feel like you got to fine tune and work on now before well, the opening? I, f I feel much more comfortable myself as the head football coach going into my second year. I mean, when, when we break from stretch and I talk to team and they go away, I, I know what to do now. Um, as opposed to um, maybe you have to you know, feel my way around. Uh, but I'm much more comfortable um, because in your first year, even though I feel like I was very well prepared, had great mentors, um, there, there is a vibrate button on there if somebody could show him how to do that. Uh, I've had great training for this opportunity. No, I was ready. There's, certain, there's just things that come across your desk on a continuous basis as a head coach that you just aren't prepared for. You're not expecting. And so I'm much more comfortable handling those things, delegating with the staff, and, and um, I believe our players are much more comfortable because it's the second time around the track now. So the only guys that won't know what we're expecting of them in practice and in training camp and in meetings will be the guys that, uh, you know, the freshmen and the other guys that are just showing up here now. Everybody else that's been in the program understands all those expectations. They understand the tempo we want to practice at. They understand um, – the learning that goes on in the meeting room. They understand what our expectations are that way. So I'm, I'm really excited about that because, as I said, then we can get a chance to take a, a, a much bigger step here, going from here's what you do to here's how you do it, and really getting into some great teaching. Um, you know, obviously with our team, um, you know, I expect a great deal of improvement. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And the, the eager thing for me as we start practice is seeing how much improvement we can make and how quickly we can make it. And that's what I'm. That's the exciting part of, of this. When you get out on the field, you start working. Okay, how quick can we can we get improve, and, and and how visible will that improvement be on the practice field every single day? And that's what the next several weeks will be about. How many positions are up for grabs? I mean, well, last year I know you said everything's up for grabs. Are those things solidified now? Brian Wagner will start at middle linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that I can tell you. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think. We have, we have more competition this training camp than we had last training camp. And every training camp after this, we will have more. Because we still, by the numbers I gave you, still below our scholarship number um, by, by a decent number. Um, so, you know, as we go through camp, um, got to be smart in how we practice still. But I believe we'll be able to practice a little bit more like you want to practice than say we were a year ago at this time. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited and, and, and anxious for all those kinds of things to, to, to come to fruition on a daily basis. Is there one position you worry about or one part of the team you worry about more than others? Maybe you know, a concern, I don't know if worry is the right word. You know, we, we have depth across the board. Is, is The depth across the board is a thing I think about a lot, okay? What if this happens or that happens and what, what do we do from there? Every position has got to improve. Um, everybody knows that. Every position from where we ended, spring practice. Every position has got to improve. We can't go backwards. We have to be moving forward. So we need every position to, to jump in here and do that. Um, and that's my expectation, and that's, I believe, our players' expectation. Uh, Coach, right. uh, any injuries if anybody's starting to camp? Today? Yes, thanks. Uh, yeah. um, Mitch Strait, you know, had, had a surgical procedure done last week, okay. and he will be slowed <clears throat> in training camp, maybe until um, the back end of training camp. All right, Vinny Rizzo had a surgical procedure a couple weeks ago, um, and he will be limited as we start camp. I do expect him, uh, maybe by the time we get into next week, um, to be more full, full speed. But he'll be limited. He'll go through some parts of practice and not others. And um, A.J. Price, who's a young man that joined us in the summer, um, you know, had a procedure done. And he's cleared to go, but he, he didn't get the, 
the benefit of our strength and conditioning program in the summer, so he'll be a little limited maybe on our end in the beginning of camp, um, certainly for the first maybe week, week or so until we feel like his conditioning level is up to a, a level where he can um, go through an entire practice. Yeah, I feel much better about where we are at, at all phases, you know, offense, defense, special teams, um, certainly feel much better about it all. And, and you know, you get, good at, you get good at something by continuous repetition. So we haven't had a position coach change on offense. The system hasn't changed on offense. And the more you step with the same foot to run the same play and do the same things, the more you hear the same verbiage, the more you understand the nuances that go with it the better you should be. So I'd expect another big jump with our team because this is the fourth time a lot of those guys are going through um, this, you know, our installation and our system and how we're running things. And uh, so I would expect um, gains from them, all the players across the board. Will we see the two back again like we saw? You will see the two back again, yes, you know, and you, you will definitely will see that. As far as the uh, kitchen game, you brought in a pretty good kicker out of Cardinal Mooney. Mm -hmm. Is that a tryout thing or is it just, just a depth chart? Well, there's a comp, TJ Marquise, he ended spring practice, you know, with, in, in, in number one in that position, and him and AJ are going to compete. Um, there will be an open competition, absolutely. And Robert Stein is a young man, who's was a non-scholarship kid also coming in. Um, but but it, there's an open competition at, a, at, our, at our place kicking position. And Zach Paul's coming in as a non-scholarship player, the punter, uh, part of our uh, uh, 12th man group, you know. And um, I'm anxious to see how he does because he was a very talented guy in, um, in high school. Are there some freshmen you're looking forward to seeing or at all? You, I'm looking forward to seeing this entire class because I feel good about this class. I mean, to see them kind of compete and how they gel um, and how, how they work. Uh, and, and I you know our, our team has done a good job embracing them in the summer. And I expect our players to continue to embrace them as we come through camp. But I'm excited just to see them run around and see how they go and, and let them know that they're um, – they won't really know what shape is for a year. They think they're in pretty good shape right now, but a year from now they'll know what real shape is, and that's kind of um, how it works. But um, um, you know, the guys have been here most of the summer since about the 19th of June. The freshman class has been here, and uh, you know they've done a good job in school. Um, the only, you know, I didn't, we don't see them. We're not involved with them from a workout standpoint. I had the whole team over my house the Wednesday before school ended, summer school ended, and they look different. A lot of guys look different. Um, the freshmen look different than when they when they reported, and I believe that the, the NCAA allowing that to happen is a really positive thing, I believe, for, for college football uh, because it allows them to get their feet wet academically and get two courses in, and it allows them to get a base of training with your strength coach who can help them um, when they come in um, in the fall. I think it's a very positive thing, and it's a very positive thing um, that our University of Akron um, has made that uh, opportunity available to our team and to the incoming freshmen. It's something that's a big part of what we do, and we certainly appreciate that.